Today, we meet under the theme of future challenges and educational responses, fostering global, innovative, cooperative education. We are gathered to identify the challenges we face and find ways how education can respond to support prosperity in the Asia-Pacific region. Since the first meetings in 1992, the APEC Education Ministerial meetings focused on finding the ways that education could promote sustainable economic growth and prosperity in the APEC region. The first two meetings acknowledged the need for the 21st century skills and competencies, and the last two meetings focused on skills for challenges and education for all. The importance of preparing future workforces with skills and competencies for the knowledge-based 21st century society cannot be overemphasized. And we must continue our efforts to create a vibrant learning community and promote prosperity of the Asia-Pacific region. As you may all know, APEC member economies have been the most active in the global economic growth in recent years, APEC economies together accounted for 70% of the worldwide economic growth. Specifically in 2011, APEC economies together accounted for approximately 44% of world trade. In the APEC leaders' meetings in 2011, these results were highlighted and leaders agreed to take concrete steps enhancing economic integration and committing efforts to transition the APEC to a seamless regional community. I'm sure we can agree that education plays a central role in economic growth. Through the past AMM meetings, we focused on preparing high quality labor force with high levels of cultural competencies and necessary knowledge and skills. Nurturing workforce through education will lead to creation of new knowledge and improved productivity and ultimately to economic growth. Korea is a good example of how education can successfully contribute to economic growth. Just 60 years ago, Korea was one of the poorest countries and many people describe, describe Korea's economic development as a miracle, unique, or sometimes unusual. However, people who is familiar with Korea's development experience would understand that it was no miracle and that education was and is major driving force. By investing in education, Korea improved individual abilities the improved individual ability led to political, cultural, and economic development, and such development through positive feedback reinforced educational development through improved capacity at economies level, regional level, and individual levels. Korean government continuously emphasizes quality improvement by setting the vision towards future education. Korean students are ranked high in PISA results, but it does not mean that we do not have our own challenges. First, we continue to focus on achieving basic academic skills for all students. Second, Korea is implementing policies for schools' increased autonomy, allowing them to create diverse curricula that match the needs of individual students. Third, we are promoting STEAM education, which stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, which emphasizes collaboratory inquiry of these subjects. The Ministry of Education, Science, and Technology's vision is education for future and science and technology towards the future. Smart education Smart Education Initiative, for example, aims to strengthen capacity of students 
by providing them appropriate ICT environment, content, and methods, such as open resources, digital textbooks, and online education for students, as well as teachers. My Style School project is initiated to strengthen technical and vocational education, providing the young generation with the latest technologies that match the needs of industry. In this project, the students after graduation and more than three years of work experience are given opportunities to take part in work to school programs for college education. Korea is also continuously putting efforts to improve higher education quality. The world-class university program, which includes support for graduate school funding and decentralization policy, allows universities with more autonomy in budget allocation and alarm and sharpen their strengths and compete in the, in the globalized world. In the globalized and knowledge-based world, we must engage, exchange, and collaborate with each other, and creativity and character building education can lead to creating new knowledge and new solutions for, for problems. While Korea is emphasizing smart education, STEAM education, technical and vocational education, and competitiveness of colleges and universities, we also recognize the importance of social capacity and emotional capacity, which are the basis of creativity and character building. Social capacity, such as honesty, trust, caring and sharing, communication and cooperation, and emotional capacity, such as self-confidence, attitudes, and interests, are essential in the globalized society. Also, these are critical factors in our efforts to prevent school violence and create safe schools. Korea recently initiated Bapsangmari education, meaning dining table education. The purpose of Bapsangmari education is to provide our young generation with quality family time. It is designed to foster social and emotional learning through Korea's traditional manners and family value and promote character building education. Many researchers found that family dining time has a positive influence not only on mental health and character, but also on students' academic achievement. Collaborative for academic, social, and emotional learning, learning known as CASEL, based on the US efforts, also emphasizes the importance of social and emotional learning such as self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making skills. We believe that such program for developing social and emotional capacity will provide the foundation of building a trust-based society. Korea's continuous effort in quality improvement and emphasis on creativity and character-building education is not an isolated initiative, but is closely linked to the APEC growth strategy agreed by leaders in 2010, sustainable, secure, inclusive, innovative, and balanced growth. As the action plan for the growth strategy identifies, education plays a central role in implementing and realizing the growth strategy. Honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, since the first AMM in 1992, we have continuously worked on supporting regional economic growth by developing and promoting future skills and equipping our students with the necessary skills for the 21st century. With the development of technology, such as and as the world is becoming more globalized, ways we communicate, work, and live are changing. And education is being challenged to prepare the students and workers with the core and fundamental knowledge 
as well as flexibility for continuous learning. These changes and challenges compel us to rethink the ways in which APEC economies cooperate for human resource development. From the past education ministerial meetings, math and science are being emphasized as the basic skills. In the globalized and knowledge-based society, math and science no longer belongs to exclusive domain of a few experts, and all students need to learn them as a core knowledge. Knowing foreign language and understanding other culture are must-have skills in the globalized market, and they are critical components for students to achieve college and career outcomes. To raise global competitiveness of our students, math and science and language education need to be developed in ways that students could have fun learning and develop problem solving, higher order thinking skills, and communication skills. And this learning process, intercultural education, should complement the learning of math, science, and language. Technical and vocational education and training, as well as higher education, are facing the challenges to provide students with the skills and competencies necessary for the job market. In today's globalized and fast-changing economy, we cannot expect people to be involved in one area for their working lives. Work-to-work -work mobility, school-to-work transition are necessary conditions for a flexible and versatile career. To improve the quality of TVET and higher education, the first step must be to clarify the meaning of high quality in the APEC region. Information and communication technology has become increasingly important in our daily life, and its growth has been explosive. ICT is no longer confined as a method of efficient information exchange. It is now an incision tool for problem solving and critical thinking. We witness the endless potential of ICT use in education. Current use of ICT in education shows that ICT can assist student learning content knowledge. Identifying effective ICT use in education remains a challenge. Students need to be knowledgeable of util utilizing ICT in their learning as well as everyday life. Our challenge is to prepare the students to use ICT effectively and appropriately. I believe that most of you will agree that teacher is the single most influential factor for quality education. We must focus on teachers from recruitment, training and preparation programs, and evaluation and standards. Also for the, for the students to use ICT effectively and appropriately, Teachers must be able to facilitate teaching and learning through ICT. This means teachers must be able to understand the content knowledge and construct information in ways that students can learn innovative skills with IT, ICT use as well as critical thinking and problem solving. Ladies and gentlemen, the global society are facing various crises and challenges, such as severe flooding, de devastating earthquake, financial crisis, economic and digital divide, and etc. It is time for us to find ways to meet these challenges by enhancing educational cooperation among member economies. Strong cooperation is called for more than ever to overcome global challenges and prepare for the future. Honorable ministers, through the past AMMs, we reached an agreement of what needs to be done and what can be achieved through cooperation. Now at this fifth AMM, we need to discuss the question of how. Specific directions for future educational cooperation and a roadmap for its development must be discussed. 
We propose cooperation as a separate agenda for full attention at this meeting. Educational cooperation in the APEC region shall not be limited to simple information exchange, but rather it needs to, to grow and expand to a deeper level of cooperation for the people and institutions of, of the APEC region. Also, educational cooperation must aim at our collective and common goals for the prosperity of APEC region. For active educational cooperation, resource, institutional, and people cooperation are necessary. Information exchange through joint research and conferences among the economies is vital in understanding the needs, best practices, and success factors of educational cooperation. Economies, institutions, and private sectors also need to build cooperative partnership. And most importantly, we must have people cooperation that is based on mutual understanding and trust. Educational cooperation at all three levels will facilitate cooperation within the HRD, among Ednet, CBN and LSPN, and as well as with the other fora in the APEC. Educational cooperation in the APEC region needs to be deepened. Future educational cooperation must involve all member economies and relevant stakeholders. Also, educational cooperation must search for constructive cooperation. From information exchange to outcome production, from independent struggle against crisis to cooperative action for solution, and from addressing policy without action to implementing policy with cooperation. At this fifth AMM, we must identify the needs of member economies, learn about the best practices, and explore feasible mechanisms with existing cooperative models and future direction for educational cooperation in the APEC region. Honorable ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, APEC economies agreed on their commitments to Bogol goal to realize economic integration and has set the growth strategy which will be reviewed in 2015. I'm certain that you will agree that education is at the center of implementing the growth strategy and realizing the BOGO goal. Our role in promoting education for all and for social, individual, and economic and sustainable development is far from done. To foster a vibrant learning community that supports economic integration of the APEC region, we must have a concrete agreement through this meeting. And I sincerely hope that we will be able to make meaningful progress towards the prosperity of Asia Pacific region. Thank you again for your support and participation at the fifth APEC Education Ministerial Meeting. Thank you.